Hello there and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make this absolutely gorgeous watercolor sketchbook. For my paper I'm going to use this uh, paper from the Fabriano block and I actually really wanted to have a square sketchbook. So what I'm going to do is actually divide it in three parts here and these are going to be my signatures. So if this is 51 centimeters long then one signature would be approximately well not approximately 17 centimeters wide and then something around like 70 a little bit more like 17 and a half centimeters long so and i think it's totally fine i'll pretend it's still kind of square and uh, let's get into it So, and now our signatures are ready, so I have 12 signatures and now we will proceed to binding them together. So what I'm gonna do, I have this huge paper clips, first I'll align them very carefully, then I'll just get them together. And actually these ones, they're not the best because they might damage the paper. So be careful with the paper clips that you choose. So and now I'm thinking how many stitches do I want to have? Which also a little bit depends on how much I want to bother with all the stitching because you know the more holes you have the more time it's gonna take you to stitch. So but I think four is going to be good enough. So let me see. How am I gonna place them? So this is approximately like 17.2. Hmm. So apparently was my my measuring was not as perfect as I thought when I was cutting it, but you know, two millimeters I can ignore it. And let's do for example I want one centimeter from the edges. Right? And then I want Two more here, so it's 15, so it's actually perfect, 5 centimeters in between, like this, and like this. Okay, so let's, go, let's just connect them. I think it's gonna be fine, I mean... That's why it's a handmade product, right? If I wanted something perfect, that wouldn't have been handmade. Just make sure that here it's visible now, because this is where we are going to make the holes. And I know some people use liners, but uh, I don't know. I just don't feel like it. I think it's gonna work, right? only thing is to make sure that there is a dot on each signature because if you miss any then you will not know where to place the hole and that will be upsetting because it might be quite difficult to align them again but so this is how it looks like and now let's proceed to hole making <laughs> and here I have a puncher and again, there are different ways to do it, so I'll see what's gonna work best. 
another thing is that if this is how you drew the holes and when you punch them try not to turn them not to flip them in any way so they still should remain like this and it will increase the chances that the signatures will look nicely when we sew them together so let me So now the signatures are ready and we will start sewing them together and what I'm going to use I think it's called a kettle stitch and I'll see if I'll find a video on YouTube that shows how to do it I'm pretty sure I will I think it's from the YouTube and uh, the name of the channel is Sea Lemon I'm pretty sure because she's great at bookbinding and I constantly find lots of inspiration on, for how to do my sketchbooks so that's what I'm gonna do and usually I use just a simple thread, you know, nothing fancy but this time I actually got a hand on this special book binding wax thread and they say that it's good to use it because then sketchbooks are less flimsy because the thread moves less and I did have this issue when I used just a simple 100 polyester thread that then the sketchbooks they would wiggle a lot so let's see if it helps I'm very excited to try it out and uh, let's get into it we are done with our signatures i think they look so very nice i must say now i understand why people choose to use the wax thread it was so much more comfortable because the signatures didn't wiggle and it was much faster i think it took me twice less time than it would uh, normally take me with the usual thread so i'm very happy about it and theoretically you can stop right here because you can just take some acrylic paint and paint something here and then you have a cover and then I know that some people, they also glue the bind together, like the bind, I'm not sure how it's called. But anyway, they press it together very hard and then they put some glue on top of it. I'm not going to do it because I do not have a book press and no matter what I tried before, when I used glue, then it would usually get in between the pages and then you need to tear them up a little bit when you open the sketchbook and I really didn't like it. The only minus of using a wax thread is that it is quite thick, so as you can see there is a bit of a gap between the pages, like not all of them, obviously. This ones are totally fine, but here there is a little bit of a gap, so if you mind that then maybe you should take a look at other techniques of sewing them together. But uh, I don't care at all that there is a gap, it doesn't matter to me because then here will be just some square painting and if I want to have a landscape painting then I'll just do it on this type of page. So it's perfectly fine with me, I'm very happy, it's very sturdy, very nice and it appeared to be a bit, a bit thicker than I expected, but that's great, I'm, I'm very excited about it and let's move on to making a cover. For the cover we are going to use this. And this is called a leather paper and what it basically means is that it combines the qualities of both paper and fabric so it's very easy to cut it like a paper but you can also sew it you can glue on it you can wash it as a fabric but you can also paint with acrylics for example on it just like on a paper and it's, i think it's wonderful wonderful material and i'm using it for many many projects and I think one of the first ones who have invented it were Craftex and that was the first paper that I bought just a second let me show you so here it is this is the one from Craftex and uh, I really like it a lot it's very thick and I actually tried painting on it with watercolors 
and it worked as well so it's beautiful I highly recommend and this one is uh, from another manufacturer but it's still great but I want to let you know that even if you buy from the same manufacturer the leather paper in different colors the texture might still be different so if you're not sure what kind of feel you're going for then I would suggest that uh, instead you buy them like in A4 sheets if possible or like sample so that you could really try out and see what you like most because this one was very different from what I've used before but I love it even more it's it's just so great oh and another quality while it's called leather paper is that actually you can wash it and crumble it and then it will have a leather look but that's not entirely the look that I'm going for I don't need it to be leather I just really like the color you know and the texture and it's also going to provide great protection to my sketchbook so I'm just going to cut it to the side and uh, attach it to it so let's start This is our finished piece and I actually forgot to tell you that you can also iron it if you feel uncomfortable about being so rolly. <laughs> I don't know if it's a word but anyway if you feel like it you can just go and iron it. It's no problem at all just make sure that you use a low heat for it. Yeah I think it's perfect. I would just exactly the way it should be. So now I would like to make an inside of this cover. And uh, by the way, if you haven't noticed yet, the texture is slightly different on the outside. In the inside, it is much smoother. And this is where I'm going to glue my inner cover. Can you say inner cover? Well, anyway, this is where I'm going to decorate it. So on the outside, it will be this nice, very handmade, natural look. While on the inside, I would like to add some color. And what I'm going to use for it is actually I have this beautiful stack of paper, which is also quite affordable. And I think this is their new collection, new spring collection. And this is from the shop called Sostenegrene. I'll try to see if you can see it. So this is the shop. I really like it. They sell really many craft supplies for a very affordable price. So this is just great. And I would like to have this design on the inside because I think it just looks so beautiful and would, look, it would uh, go so well together. So let me just find it. Yeah, but all of them, they're just so great. Look, oh, so nice for summer. So many sketchbooks to make. And there are two sheets of each paper. So, and I know I will need to use both of them. So I'm just going to pull out a bow. So using a candle and the scissors just way down because it just won't stroke. And yeah, I have some washi tape here just as a mark of where camera cannot go. So that I know that you can always see what I'm doing. So anyway, now I just want to glue it to the inside and uh, I know that it's not enough to cover the whole paper so what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna yeah, cut it here from one sheet and approximately the same from the other sheet so they will overlap in the middle and that's totally fine because it will actually reinforce a little bit the area of the spine and yes there will be a line on one side but I don't think it really matters and actually what you could do you could use two different sheets of paper and then call it a design and I've put some baking paper underneath so that I just won't get the glue everywhere
So I've let it dry and I cut off. I trimmed off the extra pieces here. I still need to do a little bit of trimming, but that's not a big deal. And uh, as I told you initially, I plan just to use this uh, second sheet of paper and kind of glue it on top and then to cut off the bottom. But then I realized that this leftover piece, it's actually almost wide enough to cover it all. So I got another idea which I would like to share with you. And uh, let's see how it's going to turn out. But now, uh, first of all, I'm just going to glue it to the other side of the cover and not like this, but like here on the edge. Let's get into it. So, and as you saw, I also put some glue in that area. It is because I thought I had all this beautiful washi tape that I don't use that often. So, let me see. Uh, this is a little bit out of theme, but oh, oh, this one. But look, look, isn't it gorgeous? And yes, it's. Well, it's kind of wide enough. So, but we can just make two of them. Yeah, let's just do both of them because otherwise it would look neat or would it? While the cover is drying, I would just like to round a little bit the corners of the sketchbook. Uh, some say it protects it, but I just also like the look of it a little bit more when it's slightly rounded. I'm going to use this tool, I don't know, corner, corner rounder, corner puncher. I'm not sure how it's called. I got it from Amazon, I think, and I cannot say that I'm happy about it. So. If you see the same puncher, probably take another one. Take a little sturdy one, because this one can punch on the like pretty much one page at a time, and that's it. And also the radius of this puncher is quite small. I think I would uh, I would get uh, with a bigger radius next time. But let's get to it. done I think that looks so nice but, but as you saw I couldn't take more pages than one at a time and sometimes it didn't work so I had to press with the two fingers so not perfect but an alternative is just to round it with scissors it won't be perfect but I mean handmade stuff just needs to be pretty but not necessarily perfect that's what makes it so attractive right so and now the cover is pretty much dry yeah i think it should be good enough and i trimmed a little bit the edges so that everything is nice and neat more or less at least and what i'm gonna do now or actually what i've done already is that i found the the center of the sheet and now we're going to make a hole right in the middle which is here, right on this dot. And that's because what I want to do is that I want something to have 
something to hold the sketchbook close. It's very important for me. I really don't like when the pages are flimsy and there is nothing to hold it with. And I have this ribbon. Is it called ribbon? I'm not sure it's called ribbon. I don't know. Well, this uh, stretchy ribbon, let's call it that way. And I'm going to use it for it. So I'm just going to measure approximately how much I would need. So it will also need to be a little bit stretchy. So I think something like that should be enough. And you can definitely use a thicker one. But I like the thin ones also because I hope it will make it easier for me to get it into the hole because that can be a bit of a challenge sometimes and then you need to use the special hole puncher and I really don't like using those ones. I just think they're so hard to use. Just make sure you don't poke your finger, okay? So now the pages, the cover wouldn't be final. I think that's really great. And what I also like that, that you can also, I don't know, put a pencil here and it will stay there. So, and of course you can use a, a thicker one. It's just the one that I have at the moment. So that's perfectly fine. And I also like how you can glimpse, you know, the inner part of the sketchbook. So I'm gonna leave it here. And um, of course the question is how we're going to attach this to the cover and by the way I forgot to mention you don't need to use the paper here at all if you want you can glue fabric for example so it's up to you because this leather paper it's just amazing it can take anything and I was thinking a lot about it and usually I would actually glue the sides to the side of my sketchbook but then I would lose if not the whole page but you know part of the page if you use that inner one and what's more then you can actually not see the full beauty of it so i decided to go with a traveler style for this sketchbook as well so, so i'll make two extra holes and use exact the same ribbon to put through it and uh, back from a small tea break so where did i stop so we made these two holes here right and now what we need to do i have also the center marked here so now we need to make two more holes in approximately the same distance from the center so somewhere here and yeah i'm just marking them right away with the tool because of course you can measure and you make it all precise but i've noticed sometimes it works best just like this when you have the tool and then and now that we made those two holes what we are going to do is that we are going to use uh, this ribbons and attach them in the traveler's book style. So once again, I'm taking first signature, putting it through, and then we're taking the last signature, and also putting it there. Just so that it goes in between. You see, it fits right in. Yeah, perfect. Well, that looks great. I'm very happy. 
about it. Let me see how we can open it up. Yeah. No problem at all. It just stays right in. It opens flat and it holds on. It slipped a little bit, so make sure it's in place. Now I'm going to tie it up firmly so that it doesn't get loose and uh, cut off the ends. So, and now uh, let's decorate our cover. So, what I want to do is just to add just a little bit of. Oh, oh my god, I got paint all over me. Oh well, anyway, I just want to get a little bit of the white elements here because we have them have a few of them inside on the design, these white flowers and this uh, white holder. Now that it's dry, I think it looks super cute and you see it was no problem at all to use acrylics there. But there's one more thing I would like to do because I have this uh, piece of paper left and uh, I don't know what else I would use it for. I just thought that it would be so cute just to have it right here. What do you think? Because then it would overlay with the design that we have inside and I don't know. I think it just looks so cute and with this white. But it's up to you the way you want to decorate it because you can stamp on it. It can definitely take it. Just make sure that your ink uh, is not water soluble so that in case you do get some water on your cover so that it doesn't get smudged because the cover itself it can totally take uh, watering and especially if you put some varnish also on the inside of the cover if you want to then it will be very very sturdy but I'm usually quite careful with my sketchbook so I don't think anything would really happen so, but now just use uh, this usual paper glue it's actually quite nice glue I'm very happy about it I also found it just in the usual I don't know, supermarket supermarkets and just great though I guess I could also have used the uh, double-sided tape huh? now that I'm thinking about it the only thing again I make sure that it goes up to the ends as well sorry if it's a little bit of camera it's just uh, slightly easier to do it that way so nice it's so cute look at that and it's lying flat oh it's amazing oh my god i'm in love with it and now i cannot wait to paint with it i mean not with it and now i cannot wait to paint in it so here's the view So pretty and here's the finished sketchbook I really hope that you enjoyed watching this video and if you decide to make one of your own then please uh, feel free to share on Instagram just tag me at artcraftjoy and I would love to see what you have come up with and uh, 
yeah it was a great fun project it did take me a little bit of time to make but with this uh, waxed thread for binding it was just amazing it ended up to be much faster than i have expected and now it, it just ah oh, ah oh, it just looks amazing i can't wait to start painting it and then just sharing it with you so but thank you very much for watching and uh, have a great day see you in my next video bye